Madam President, we note the initiative of France to convene today's meeting in connection with the intensification of hostilities in the friendly Republic of Lebanon. We thank UN Under Secretary General Rosemary DiCarlo and Jean Pierre Lacroix for their reports on the alarming developments in the border area between Lebanon and Israel. We are witnessing the unprecedented escalation of violence in the Gaza Strip far beyond the Palestinian Israeli conflict zone, destabilizing more and more countries in the Middle East. Today, following Gaza, Beirut is at the epicenter of the region wide crisis, with heartbreaking images of its bombing already circumnavigating around the world. We are still receiving more and more evidence that Israel is arrogantly disregarding the opinion of the international community the UN and the Security Council, choosing escalation over diplomacy. The unprecedented cyber attack, which injured thousands of innocent people, was followed by massive Israeli airstrikes on southern and central Lebanon. Behind them, despite calls for a ceasefire by some members of the international community and protests by others, the so-called limited ground operation of the Israel Defense Forces began on October 1st. At the same time, Hezbollah is also carrying out retaliatory shelling of Israeli territory, attacking, among other things, military facilities deep inside the Israeli state near Haifa and near Tel Aviv. Hundreds of reconnaissance and attack UAVs operate in the skies over southern Lebanon day and night. Every hour, Israeli Air Force planes carry out massive missile and bomb strikes, the targets of which are the alleged locations of Hezbollah's weapons, its fighters and commanders, the military and even civilian infrastructure of the Shiite movement, including medical and media centers. The cynicism of these attacks is discouraging. Some of them are taking place in densely populated neighborhoods of Beirut and other Lebanese cities. It turns out that the authorities in Jerusalem are not only blatantly flouting the principles of international humanitarian law, but are also viewing civilian casualties as some kind of collateral damage in the spirit of cutting down a forest and chips flying. During the September 27th bombing, which killed Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah, six multi-story residential buildings, with all the civilians who were there at that time, were turned into a pile of rubble. Warnings addressed to the Lebanese about the need to leave this or that area or object are routine and in fact unfulfillable. As a result, the number of civilian casualties is multiplying every day and is many times higher than the losses in the ranks of the fighters of the Shiite movement. We do not see any excuses for new civilian casualties, which are already in the thousands. We express our solidarity with the leadership and people of the Land of the Cedars, which has once again been subjected to Israeli armed aggression. Although the ground incursion into Lebanon has so far affected very limited areas, more than a million people in southern Lebanon have already been forced to flee their homes and become internally displaced. More than 400,000 people managed to cross the border with neighboring Syria before the Israeli Air Force destroyed the road surface near the Masna border crossing with a targeted strike, blocking transport links between Beirut and Damascus. As far as we can tell, UN peacekeepers are also being targeted by Israel. This, as we all understand, is a war crime and deserves our strongest response. Israeli military raids on Lebanese territory end in fierce clashes with Hezbollah fighters, heavy losses on both sides, and a retreat to their original positions. In general, the forces are not equal, and Israel demonstrates a willingness to seek the destruction of its enemy at any cost, regardless of any civilian casualties. In short, the same scenario is being implemented in Lebanon as in Gaza. Under these conditions, the Security Council, paralyzed through the fault of the United States, despite the mandate entrusted to it by the UN Charter to maintain international peace and security and the availability of the necessary tools to stop the violence, only silently watches as the Israeli military machine systematically continues to push the entire region into a state of chaos. At the same time, talks about the fate of the Israeli hostages remaining in the hands of Hamas, and in general about the implementation of Security Council Resolution 2735, which approved the so-called Biden deal at the insistence of the United States, immediately stopped.
Our American colleagues have also ceased to be active in the UN Security Council, and they nevertheless continue to block any attempts by Security Council members to adopt decisions that would make it possible to achieve a ceasefire in the region. Israel is now all in, despite the bitter experience of the 2006 campaign. Together with him, his American accomplices are forced to act on the principle of hit or miss. Moreover, they are also shackled by the election campaign that is reaching a climax. Everything is clear with this bundle. The only question is what the Security Council members should do in these circumstances. We do not know about our colleagues, but we remain convinced that an early ceasefire in the Gaza Strip is the main thing that the Council should seek. It will be followed by a de-escalation of the military political situation, both in Lebanon and in the Middle East as a whole. We firmly believe that only a solution to the Palestinian problem which is the cornerstone problem, with a view to launching a comprehensive political settlement process within the well-known international legal framework, will bring sustainable and long-term peace to the Middle East. We also demand the full and comprehensive implementation of UNSC Resolution 1701, which contains both Israel's obligations to cease all offensive military operations, withdraw its armed forces from southern Lebanon and end the occupation of Lebanese territories, and Hezbollah's obligations to withdraw units north of the Litani River. We express our full support for the UN interim force in Lebanon and stress the need to strictly ensure the safety of peacekeepers exposed to unpredictable risks due to the Israeli presence on the Blue Line. To solve all these problems, Russia is ready to use the entire impressive arsenal of measures and means at the disposal of the UN Security Council. We are confident in ourselves, but unfortunately, we are not confident in some of our colleagues on the Council. For a number of them, the desire not to embarrass their American ally still overrides everything else, and the most they can do is make beautiful but empty speeches in this room. In these conditions, we will continue to make diplomatic efforts to de-escalate the situation and prevent a catastrophic scenario for the entire Middle East. On October 3rd, Russia sent a batch of humanitarian aid to Beirut. We see that many of our colleagues are doing the same. However, humanitarian efforts are clearly not enough in circumstances where Israel and the United States are pouring gasoline on the flames of the most destructive escalation in the Middle East and flagrantly flouting international law and the UN Charter. And some, while holding the Council hostage and using their veto five times to protect Israel's interests, also cynically link the ineffectiveness of the UN UN Security Council with the need to reform it. Its effectiveness is in our common hands, and it is in our power to show it, to show it right now. We are ready for this and are determined to act together with all those for whom the UN Charter and international law are not empty words. Thank you for your attention. Response. We've heard this many times before. It's all déjà vu. This is the only thing that the U.S. mission has to say in response to fair criticism of the U.S. role in the crisis in the Middle East.